Like the State of the Union, President Obama went to Capitol Hill this past week to hard sell his budget to lawmakers. Most telling about the trip, his meetings were with fellow Democrats. The president insists his proposal to spend on health care and energy reform are vital to the country's economic recovery. But Republicans say it's a return of tax and spend liberalism. But even some Democrats say the Obama agenda costs more than the country can afford right now. Navigating those tough policy and political choices is the task of two powerful Democrats who lead the budget committees. And both men are with us this morning. Senator Ken Conrad joins us from his home state of North Dakota. Here in the studio, Democratic Congressman John Spratt of North Carolina. Gentlemen, I want to get to the economy and the budget in just a minute, but I want to first hold up the Bismarck Tribune right here in the studio. Hope rises in Fargo. And I say that, and then we'll go back to that live picture right there. This is the Red River you're seeing on your screen from the Minnesota side. But Senator Conrad, you are home because of this crisis in your state. There seems to be cautious optimism this morning. Take a minute to give us the latest. Well, John, this is a heroic effort. Uh, tens of thousands of volunteers, an all-out fight to contain this river that is now at uh, the highest level ever in recorded history. And uh, it went down a little bit overnight, but we expect a second crest. And there is a tremendous volume of water out there that's still heading toward the river. So we're cautiously optimistic, but we also understand this fight is far from over. All right, Senator, we will keep tracking that throughout the day and keep in touch with you. But I want to move now to the monumental task both of you gentlemen face, and that is getting the budget through the Congress. I want to have the conversation this morning, not as three guys who work in Washington, but as three guys who, like other Americans sitting around their kitchen table, maybe watching this morning, are having a hard time making the numbers add up. And families are saying, can we afford that summer vacation? Maybe we need a new car. Can we afford it? So when I look at your budget proposals, I want you to help me through this in the context. And let me start with you, Chairman Spratt, is that many would say, look, we know you in Congress don't like these financial bailouts. Nobody likes spending billions of dollars that go to the big banks. But the president in his budget said, I'm probably going to need $250 billion down the road. So I'm going to be honest and I'm going to put it in my budget. You have decided in your budget to take that out. Now, some say that's a gimmick so that you get a lower deficit number than the president, but you know you're going to have to spend that money. Well, we don't know it. And we're essentially saying, come make your case. The burden of persuasion is upon the president. Nobody likes funding these things. We'd like to see more definition than we got in the last packages. So this is our way of exercising a little leverage over it. If it's needed, we'll be there to support it. But let's not create a presumption that it is needed and see if we can't make the most of what's in circulation already. And, and Senator, you do the same in your budget. But there's another thing, especially given where you are today, that has many people rolling their eyes saying, you know, Kent Conrad is trying to have a lower deficit number, but he took out the contingency funding for national, natural disasters in his Senate budget proposal. And in the House, I believe they cut it in half. You're sitting there today watching your city, your state at such a risk. And there's no money in your budget for a, a contingency plan that would be used in just these situations. Yeah, that's because we have never funded disasters going forward because nobody knows what the disasters might be. The president, for the first time, put in his budget, in a 10-year budget, uh, an estimate of what disasters might be. But the Congressional Budget Office would not score it because they said it was too speculative. And so we left it out for that reason. The Congressional Budget Office simply couldn't determine whether those estimates had any validity or not. Well, as you know, many would say you, that, that helps you get to a lower deficit number. But let's talk about a bigger challenge. The president says we must reform health care and we must do it this year. He had about $650 billion in a reserve fund in his budget. You have both decided that, yes, you want to deal health care. Both of your budgets say we will deal with health care, but it leaves the decision about financing it down the road. Your leader, Senator Conrad, Senator Reid, said this past week, you know, with the cap and trade, and the, some energy taxes will get about $650 billion, and that's about what we need as a down payment on health care reform. Are you willing to pay for health care reform through higher energy taxes? Well, that's an option, but look, what we have done is provide for a deficit neutral reserve fund. The administration has said all along they want to do major health care reform, and we agree with them entirely. They're exactly right. Uh, and they have said they would pay for it over a period of time, and that's what we've provided for. We've given maximum opportunity for the committees of jurisdiction, maximum flexibility to write major health care reform and to pay for it. Could I add to that? Please. With respect to the health care trust fund, reserve fund, 
it is uh, paid for by identified items in the president's budget, not necessarily items we accept or implement in the House, but we don't get down to that level of specificity. But he provides $634 billion, half of which are savings in existing Medicare and Medicaid programs, the other half of which comes from limiting the itemization of uh, deductible. Uh, mortgage deduction and charitable deductions for more affluent Americans. Are you prepared to do that? Well, we didn't put it in our budget resolution, so we think it's an open debate, and a lot of people are not prepared to go that far. But If you're not prepared to go that far, though, and Senator Conrad, you come in first, where will the money come from? Or you're gonna, you'd have to find revenue elsewhere, which means higher taxes elsewhere. You know, I, I think part of this is there is a misunderstanding of what the actual powers of the Budget Committee are. We don't have the power to tell the committees of jurisdiction how to specifically spend the money. We tell them how much money they have to spend. We don't have the power to tell the Finance and Ways and Means Committee how to raise the money. We have the authority to tell them how much money to raise. So it is not within our power to tell them specifically how to do it. We do have the responsibility to give them a number to hit, and that's what we have done. You're both trying, you're both trying. Both of you made your names in the Congress as deficit hawks. Among the Democrats years ago who were willing to stand up to your own party and say, look, we're spending too much money, we have to balance the budget. I, I want to get a sense from each of you is how much do you feel you may be having to compromise your hard-fought principles to be loyal to this president who has a very, very ambitious agenda. I know, Mr. Chairman Spratt, you said just last week, we'll try to get it all done this first year, but I'm not sure we can. Well, wait, he's only been in office as president a few months. And for the most part, what we're looking at needs horrendous deficits is something that is carried over from the previous administration. But they get bigger under his. And they I want to put indeed. a picture up on the screen as we continue the conversation. Senator Judd Gregg, your friend, Senator Conrad, had an event last week in which he noted that the projected deficits under President Obama would be more than the 43 presidents in 232 years before him. Is that a legacy you want the Democratic Party to inherit? Well, we've already inherited it. Unfortunately, we inherited from the previous administration a doubling of the debt, a tripling of foreign holdings of U.S. debt, and an economy in shambles. And so when that happens, obviously deficits and debt go up dramatically in the short term. The great challenge here is to put us on a more sustainable path. And you look, uh, in fairness to the Obama administration, they made their estimates of the revenue available to us three months ago. In the intervening period, those deficits have eroded, and as a result, we have had to make changes in the president's proposal to get the deficit on a track that will reduce it by two-thirds over the next five years. So you ask initially, have we compromised with the president, and have we compromised our principles of being concerned about debt? Absolutely not. The president said to us, Look, we got to reduce our dependence on foreign energy, absolutely critical. We got to focus on excellence in education. We've got to have major health care reform because that's the 800 pound gorilla. That's the thing that can swamp the boat fiscally for the United States. So those provisions are in this budget as well as reducing the deficit by two thirds over five years, getting us back on a better course. Let me ask you both in closing, we're almost out of time, a more political question. You both survived. 1994. And you make the case about what you inherited from the Bush administration, but life and politics are often not fair. You know what's going to happen in two years. President Obama's not on the ballot for almost four years. But the Republicans are already gearing up for the, this is what happened when you elected Bill Clinton. You got big government, tax and spend liberalism. I know you disagree with the charge, but sir, are you nervous for your party in the midterm elections going forward? Because the deficit reduction Senator Conrad talks about that you promise comes down the road. It doesn't come in those first two years. Well, we have to understand why that is and also acknowledge that both Senator Conrad and I are moving the budget towards balance within a reasonable period of time. From a trillion eight thereabouts to mid 500 billion in four to five years time. That's not an acceptable number. I want to see the glide path of deficit reduction continue onward for the second five years, but that is a pretty ambitious target and one we think we can hit, partly because what's swelling the deficit now are non recurring items such as the TARP, such as the cost of uh, taking over Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. These things we hope won't occur, recur in 2009-2010. And in that, that gives us an opportunity to drive this budget down to a, an acceptable, for the time being, debt level. 
Gentlemen, I'm sorry we're out of time this morning. We'll invite you both back. It's a very important issue, but we did want to take some time to deal with the flood as well. Senator Conrad, good luck to you and the people of North Dakota as you deal with this crisis. We hope everything turns out for the best. Mr. Thank Chairman you. Spratt, thank, thank you, you so much for joining us. Later in the program, we'll hear from the Republican leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell of Kentucky. Straight ahead, though, we'll take you to St. Louis, Missouri, one of many cities where transit cuts are leaving residents stranded and angry. Thank you.